people make remarks about this, they, they use very dramatic words like this tragedy, but we don't use those dramatic words. The irony is we laugh a lot and, and I endeavor to respectfully keep her laughing. Uh, whilst not denying the reality, because the reality is there, is present with you every day in her confusion, in her anxiety. That's a fact. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of The Final Say, Conversations with People Facing Death. This is the podcast where you can get comfortable talking about death and learn some things about life from people who are facing death. I'm your host, Deborah Jarvis, and today I'm talking with Cheryl Hauser. At age 70, Cheryl was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Now, you may remember that I usually have on only one guest at a time, but Cheryl felt more comfortable having her husband, David, and her daughter, Wendy, in the conversation along with me. I also want to give you a heads up that today we're talking about ending life, but in the context of a terminal illness. Alzheimer's is a progressive disease from which there is no cure. And with Alzheimer's disease, medical aid in dying is not legal in any state. But there is another choice, VSED, V-S-E-D. And it stands for voluntarily stopping eating and drinking. And that is the choice that at some point, Cheryl is going to make for herself before the worst of the disease takes effect. But before we talked about her death, I first asked Cheryl and David what their daily life is like. Every day is very different. Okay. It's very different. I mean, I can, I can wake up in the morning. David brings me a cup of tea and then we come downstairs and we sit and we just have a beautiful area. Yeah. And, um, and then probably six out of nine times I just cry so crying is my place of it actually makes me feel better because I just believe in letting out the tears letting out the tears letting out the tears because there is so little that I can still do Uh Um, I mean I can't cook I can't I, I, I can't do anything so that that then, you know, he is just the best person in the entire world. <laughs> He's just so supportive. And, and we have, we have laughs because David is what you are. I have a British wit. A British ah! wit. <laughs> Any kind of wit is good. <laughs> she's a fabulous audience. Yeah. She's a fabulous yeah. audience to that because some of that wit is pretty terrible. But I mean, he is right there. And so like, like when I know that I should get out of bed yeah. then he will come and help me get dressed. I mean, I haven't been able to dress myself for a long, long time so that he comes, he comes up and then, you know, he has to put everything on or off or whatever. And that then I feel, I just feel so sad. I feel mm-hmm. so freaking sad. We allow the time until we get over that really difficult uh, period in the morning until we then open up and talk about the day. And then often at night, uh, if she's had a stimulating day or any sort of day, um, she can go to bed and then go dive deeply into a funk at the end of the day. So that often happens more often now. Tell me about your spiritual beliefs, because if I recall correctly, you used to play in a handbell choir in church. Yep, yep. at a um, at a handbell choir in Minneapolis. It, so yeah, the handbells, and you know, I was on boards, and I was on this and that and this, and then I realized that even if I'm sitting with three people having a conversation, I I don't even a, after a few few moments I say I have no idea what they're saying Uh, and I don't even get what they're saying 
So as this has pro- progressed, there's more and more and more that I cannot do. The executive functioning is just gone. Yeah. And what I see is a person who is endeavoring uh, to figure things out. She's trying to straighten out a mind that won't straighten out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wrote an essay recently where I said it's like being in a fog, but the more you try to get out of the fog, you're getting deeper into the fog. And as a result of that, there is um, a, that confusion uh, is causes the pain and the sadness and the tears. Mm-hmm. And we just do our best, um, Deborah, to be honest, to our mantra is simply, uh, again, it sounds rather cliche-ish, but we, we, this is one day at a time. Yeah. This is, this is, we make decisions one day at a time. If we make plans for the future, um, we make the plan knowing that when that time comes, it may be canceled. We just canceled a trip that we, we were going to take to London, uh, and we canceled it because Cheryl's uh, anxiety level uh, for traveling is just going through the roof right now. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a fact. So we're in the airport. And Cheryl has incredible anxiety of using the women's restroom. Because when she goes into the stall, she doesn't know whether she can get out. She gets okay. confused. The last couple of times she's come out of the restroom, I've been waiting outside uh, and just fell into my arms sobbing. Mm. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, so who wants that anxiety uh, and, and in someone's life? And our theology, and I think that's very important, our theology is that people talk about, you know, God doesn't give you anything you can't handle, uh, but we don't believe God gives you those things. What we believe, this is life, uh, and this is what we are challenged by, uh, and and we will we will handle it. Cheryl, I'm curious. What gives you the most joy in your day? Painting. Painting. And and how is it that it gives you joy? Uh, what is it about well, painting? I've been painting for so long, mm-hmm. but they're all they're all very um, how would you describe them? That 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 they're easels and then and then I have different colors and my favorite colors are black and yellow Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I will just sometimes I'll be in the living room and I'll dance a little bit and then I'll come over and then I have all my things set out and then I just go (laughs) (laughs) and that just that just brings me and and my family and my brother and my parents they were very very musical so we do a lot of living room dancing (laughs) we do everybody should do more of that (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. But just as an example, when David brought me off at Wendy's house the other day or two days or something, I just sat down at, you know, their counter and I just lost it. Oh. I just lost it. I said, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And she's so wonderful, but it's exhausting. It's exhausting to try to figure out what to do during the day. I mean, I can't, I can't, I just can't do anything. I just can't. Yeah. My example has been when we wanted to have children, children, we wanted to have somebody over for dinner. And I have always been a big entertainer. Mm -hmm. And so I got out some silverware and put them on the, the dining room table but then I had no idea where to put the fork or the knife or the spoon. Oh. And then what happens is that then I believe that, and then I'm crying and David comes upstairs, of course. But, you know, what I know is that, is that I'm not dumb. I'm just, I mean, I'm a strong woman, but, but then what happens? Well, you, you you accept that it's your brain. Yeah, that I say and, this is my brain. It's not my intellect. But I feel stupid when I sure. can't do things. Yeah, yeah. So that's a typical thing when I just don't know what to do, and then I don't know what to do, and then I get sad. Yeah. The um, 
the irony of the situation, uh, Deborah, is that Cheryl is physically in superb condition. In fact, you know, she's a 76 year old woman whose doctor tells her that she's never met anyone who is so physically healthy. Wow. Um, right. I mean, um, virtually, uh, she takes a, an antidepressant and she takes um, a, a pill to go, go to sleep at night, but no other pills, no other medication. Wow which is perfect health. And so uh, the pain for her and for all of us is this emotional pain that she feels. This, And as she talks about uh, the sadness, this ongoing and deepening sadness that, that grows. Cheryl watched her brother die of Alzheimer's and she told me, it was absolutely horrible to watch him struggle. Now, at the top of the episode, I talked about V said voluntarily stopping eating and drinking. And this is what Cheryl has chosen to end her life so that she and her family and friends don't have to suffer through Alzheimer's. And I asked her how and when she came to that decision. Yeah, oh, just yeah. from the get go. Okay, from the very, very beginning. So um, tell me what you do think happens when you die. I'm impressed that you're not afraid of death. And I wonder if that has to do with your religious beliefs or what are your feelings about, like, where do you go? What happens when you get out of your body? I just know that it's going to be good. I mean, my parents have been long gone and I'll, you know, I, I just know that there will be positivity. And again, I have no fear of dying. So because I'll I'll be around all of my family and my best friends. And my parents were killed in the world's largest plane crash. It was in the Tenerife. Five hundred and fifty-seven people died, and two seven forty-sevens collided. Nineteen seventy-seven. It's one of those things that I just intuitively know that my parents will be there. I just know it. I just know it. There's really only been one person um, that has said, well, I can't support you, for V said, because only God decides who's going to die. And that's not my thing. I mean, I get to choose how I want to die. And what was so your response to that person? Was that a close friend or family member or just- It was a of- very close friend and- um, and, and very close friend, but she just said, well, you just can't do this. This is, you you can't decide, God decides. God will come down and help you die. No. Cheryl told me earlier that she knew it would be time to V said when nothing mattered anymore, when she didn't care about anything. So I asked her, well, how will you know if your Alzheimer's has progressed enough, and if it's progressed that much, will you be able to even express yourself? That Wendy will know when I don't care about anything. Okay. And so, yeah, that's, so your, that's, that's your criteria. That's right. That's yeah. right. So when nothing matters to her anymore, and this woman who is incredibly full of joy, when she is not experiencing joy anymore, I support what she wants to do. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm dreading it, but it's what's right for her. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how you, Wendy and David, will respond if during V said, suddenly Cheryl says, you know, I don't want to do this. I really want drink now. I'm I'm just really, really thirsty. I mean, are you going to encourage her to remember that she made this decision, like, you know, maybe she forgets. How will you deal with that? One to Wendy, because that's her expertise, uh, Deborah. yeah. Wendy is a death doula or a death midwife. And in the same way that a birth midwife helps a baby be born, come into the world, a death doula helps someone get out. So her role is to create peace of mind for both the person who's dying and their family. I'll put a link to Wendy's website uh, in the transcript on the show notes on the Final Say podcast website. One, it's helpful. I had uh, uh, my first 
the said client last June could experience what that those situations are like and how to um, support anyone who has an urge of a thirst. There's a lot of different tools and techniques with maybe spraying one small spritz after they take medication or with a cold spoon. So there's definitely like physical things. And then we've shot videos before of mom's kind of V-said statement of why she wants to be said, but we'll shoot a smaller little videos. If mom says, oh yeah, but I, I would really like a, a drink and I, this is uncomfortable. And, and if she starts, you know, like that, that's one thing or like, all right, let's get you comfortable. It's another thing if it's day four or five and she starts forgetting why she wanted to do this. So at that point, we'll have um, videos that she's speaking to herself, reminding her of why she chose to be said. Um, and, and we'll also say, you know, mom, if, if I do give you that drink, then um, you are delaying death. And that and this is something that you have wanted to do. But ultimately, if mom says, no, nope, I know all of it. I get it. I just decided this isn't what I want to do. Then we need to respect that. I just want to uh, bookend what Wendy said and bring completion to that last thought. Cheryl has never wavered in her decision to be said. Many times I have checked with her, darling, do you still want to, sure you want to do this? And it's been absolutely. So uh, that uh, confirmation or that certainty uh, has always remained. She's never had a moment's hesitation about it. That doesn't mean, uh, Deborah, what you said couldn't happen, of course. But I think uh, Wendy was quite articulate in sharing the process and what happens. What is it like for you to see Cheryl every morning and know that you're going to help her get off the planet? Truly, one has to manage your emotions so much. Hmm. Uh, and uh, I know what's going to happen. But I choose not to dwell in that place simply because it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve Cheryl. It's inevitable. Uh, we're dealing with a terminal disease. So we have made a pact that we truly will do this one day at a time. We're both people who I think have good spirits, strong spirits mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that help us transcend this. And then so... You know, I, I endeavor to uh, ma self-manage in the best way that I can. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 we just can't go too far. It will happen when it happens. Uh, now, I am in a little different position in that my first wife died of ovarian cancer. So I, I was a caregiver to her, uh, not like I am to Cheryl, but um, at, at the end, uh, the quality of her life was so non-existent that one could only wish for her release. So I've had that in my background, and like all experiences, that does help to a certain degree. With with Cheryl, um, I experience her emotional pain every day, you know, in a consistent way, and I would not want her to be in pain whether it's that terminal illness of a cancer or whether it's the emotional uh, pain that she goes through, uh, no. Put yourself in the place of listeners to this podcast and they're listening to someone who's got Alzheimer's and is going to be said, what would you want them to know? Ask for help. Don't be afraid to cry because crying is a beautiful thing to do. And it's okay to simply say, this is how I want to die. I get to choose. I get to choose. You have to be thoughtful about the details around the actual visa process. It's not something that you want to decide, yes, I'd like to be said and I want to go next week. And that's the first time your healthcare director, your internist or whomever um, knows about this. I'm thinking about the steps that it takes to make sure that the process goes as smoothly as possible. Do you have 
have any plans to, or maybe you've already done this, have any kind of gathering of friends and family to say goodbye, I love you, I forgive you. Oh, I absolutely. Yeah, no, so my both of my daughters did a, Wendy, why don't you, why don't you tell them what, what you put together last oh, fall? Yeah. But mom really wanted to be able to, one, have an opportunity to um, look all her dear friends in the eyes and tell them how grateful she was for being a part of her, her story and her life. And she also wanted to be able to have these friends meet. And it was, be it was lovely. It was absolutely beautiful. And um, mom has this quote, so everybody walked away with this really pretty letterpress quote that a friend of mine made for, for everyone. It's, and this is mom's, one of her mantras. It's Maya Angelou. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Yeah, so that was sort of like the general feel for the gathering. And it was also a time where mom, a uh, thing that mom is able to do that brings her joy is um, paint. So everyone at the party could leave with a canvas um, of original work from mom. So that was quite beautiful. So here's my final say for today. I completely agree with Maya Angelou that there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. And I'm so glad that Cheryl and David and Wendy got to share their stories with us today. Stories are important. The stories that we tell ourselves and the stories that we tell one another. And there is one final story that I want to leave you with today. One thing that Cheryl and I have in common is that we both have done the 500 mile pilgrimage of the Camino de Santiago. And this is David telling a story about Cheryl talking about it. After she came back from the Camino, uh, she was asked to talk about her experience at the service that we, we were at, right? So Cheryl's up there uh, and, she, and she's talking about it. And then she talks about, as you would know, getting to the church, St. James at the end. And she looks up and, and she's telling the, the, the people. And there was Jesus Christ. Um, um, and she's doing this. Um, and then someone says, crucified. And Cheryl says, yes. She said, all I could think of was circumcised. <laughs> Well, he was Jewish, so, you know. Thanks for listening to The Final Say. And thank you again to Cheryl Hauser, David McNally, and Wendy Brown for sharing their stories. Thanks also to Blue Dot Sessions Music. As always, you guys are awesome. If you would like more information about visa, medical aid in dying, dementia care, I strongly suggest that you go over to CompassionAndChoices.org. They're a wonderful organization that have tons of resources and information and can help guide you through all of that. Also, if you like this podcast or you don't like this podcast, please let me know. Feel free to go to the website, thefinalsaypodcast.com, and leave a comment or go to Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts and write a review. And feel free to subscribe. Thanks again for listening.